The views and opinions expressed by the hosts do not state or reflect those of the company and its management. Furthermore, the assumptions, views, opinions, and insinuations made by the hosts or the guests do not reflect those of the show, the management, and the company. Understand. Casting live from Manila, Philippines, we are Simply Security, helping you streamline security easily. Hello, good evening, everyone. Good evening, Philippines. Good evening, listeners. Welcome back to another episode of Simply Security. We are on our second season, and this is our fourth episode recorded live. Live today, 10th of March, 2021. I am Miles Melia. My name is Eric Kalindogan. Welcome to Simply Security. Helping you streamline security easily. Hi, Miles. Hello, Eric. Yeah, <laughs> I would like good. to give a heads up to our audience or our listeners. If I have this huge delay, forgive me and forgive my provider. My internet <laughs> provider, I mean. Okay. And probably I would also like to greet, you know, our audience as well as Miles, you know, a fruitful International Women's Month. So for, for, for this oh, yeah. month, uh, yes. So for this month, we are aiming to, to invite, you know, um, women leaders, uh, particularly in the field of security and in different sectors. And it's also very uh, timely and very interesting because our guest for tonight is a very renowned uh, security Amazing. leader, a woman. woman. <laughs> yes. So, Mamaya, we will be having uh, a deep conversation um, with her in relation to our topic for tonight, which is cybersecurity. I guess our topic uh, for tonight, which is cybersecurity for the ordinary one or ordinary uh, Filipinos, uh, will uh, hopefully will uh, one us, right? Will eventually <laughs> help uh, everyone. Um, especially those who are not that, uh, they are what we call the digital migrants. Or oh, not that We are the digital program. migrants. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So tonight, we are excited to have a very renowned professional who will be our resource expert about our very interesting topic. So let me introduce our guest for tonight. She was recently a judge as one of the top 10 women in cybersecurity Philippines 2020. Our speaker's career has taken her through 24 years of study, research, teaching, and administration. She holds three advanced degrees in master's in information systems at the University of the Philippines, master's in public management, major in development and security at the Development Academy of the Philippines. And most recently, she finished her master's in international development and practice at Monash University in Australia. She has written numerous articles in popular journals, currently serving as a lieutenant colonel in the communications, electronics, and information systems of the armed forces of the Philippines. She has promulgated innovations, changes, and modernization as an army signal officer, a lady of many faces. She is a soldier, a certified ethical hacker, a certified secure computer user, women and peace and security, and gender and development advocate and trainer, development practitioner, a formal mentor, a pistol expert, oh. judoka, and above all, a mom of two wonderful sons. Wow. Ladies and gentlemen, it's our honor to welcome her in the podcast, Lieutenant Colonel Francel Margaret Padilla Taborluba. Hello, Good everyone. E Good evening. Good evening, Eric. Good evening, Miles. Good evening po. <laughs> Thank you for having me tonight. Good evening. Thank you for accommodating our invitation, ma'am. Let's start. I'm just curious <laughs> to know, and probably some of our listeners tonight, can you tell us first how your career in cybersecurity started? I graduated in the year 2000 in the Philippine Military Academy. So we're both mm. from Baguio City, all of us three. Yes. So we, we, <laughs> studied, yeah, we studied in, in Baguio City. And after graduation, I joined the Philippine Army as a signal officer. So as a signal officer, you have choices in terms of communications, 
electronics or information systems. So I trekked the path of IS. And then I used to be the chief of the information systems development branch. So during my term, we had 80 systems being developed, not just for the army, but for the whole AF. And then I pursued a career in VIP security. So I became the AD camp of President Gloria Macapagal Arroyo. And because I moved on to the term of uh, Pinoy as a president, the group commander then knew me from my former designation as the chief IS branch. So he said, oh, why are you performing security, physical security, you know, in the palace? So it's Mm -hmm. like, oh, come come back and then we'll set set up a server farm and everything. So I was trained for cybersecurity because back then the palace was being hacked, the email accounts and all. So I was trained as a cyber then and that's when when my cyber career started. And the rest is now history. Now I'm in this (laughs) pandemic. I have performed a lot of uh, different um, Different aspects. Yes, yes. Mm-hmm. All right. Now, um, I just have this uh, question. Of course, as we all know that Filipinos are one of the most active social media users. Before, it was the Philippines as the SMS capital. Now, it's the social mm-hmm. media uh, capital, some sort of. In fact, recent study of Statista shows for the third quarter of 2020, despite the pandemic, or because of the pandemic, it implied that an average Filipino spent around 10 hours online and 3.5 hours of which are spent on their social media. Now, which makes us a decent target for possible cyber attacks. Uh, So in your experience, uh, Mom Prancel, what do you think are the most common Filipino behaviors that make us prone against cyber attacks? What I see no, from the Filipinos, we are very active in uh, online. There seems to be a lack of regard for online privacy. How do we say that? So we post everything online. We go to a restaurant, you know, we check in, uh, checking in to this restaurant mm. and all that. And then when we go on vacations, we say, okay, I'm in Palawan, day one of five. You know, so that, yeah. in that case, because of what we post Overshare. Online, Yes, we become potential targets. Why? Because right. our lives are being patterned. So if I am a uh, masamang loob and I want to enter yeah. your house and you know akyat bahay gang of sorts, I know that I have five days to yeah. get everything from your house because I know it's empty because you're in Palawan. The whole family yeah. is practically there. So because we have been posting everything, so we have been giving opportunities for the mga masasamang loob to be able right. to know and pattern our lives. Right. One more thing is our yung makiki uso. So right. pag uso to, we will we, go, you know, we'll, we'll go with the trend. Yes. So right. now because everything is online, online selling, live selling, and all that. So you know, when we do live selling, we show them in the insides of our house. So we practically, you know, we practically give access to the insides of our house. It's just being posted anywhere in group yeah, sites. True. You know, so you know how to enter the house through the door, through a window. You know what time do they sleep because you say, okay, it's until now because it's time to sleep, you know, and stuff like that. In a way, it's like you're giving them reasons. Yes. And then you also know how many people are inside the house at any one time because the kids right. are practically roaming mm. around, right. you know, and all that. So you can count actually how many is in the household. So that's another trait that puts it down. And then it's, it's unknown that Hindi, hindi natin inaakala na mangyayari yun. Mm-hmm. Another trait is mapamahiin tayo. You know? Superstitious. So, uh-huh. Yes, we're superstitious. So if you receive a chain letter that says <laughs> something bad will happen to you if you do not forward yeah. this to 30 people, you know? So what do you do? You forward it. Oh my gosh. Yeah. So, yeah, this little trees, you know, you, you actually don't have a great gravestone that read died because I didn't yeah. look forward to n number of people, right? Yeah. So those are, are very common traits of Filipinos that we think it's okay, but actually it gives out our privacy, our security. And there's another trait, which is So, um, you know, um, if there is something posted online and it says click because the more likes I get, you know, Bill Gates will give n yeah, number of one. dollars for me right. to get operated. So those things are are actually not true, but because of the Filipino emotions, we will click it. And there's yeah. also this medyo may, may konting yabang yung Filipino. We're very, very proud of our families. So we tend to go 
you tend to join the challenges that are posted online, right? right. So we have the mother-daughter challenge. So you you post your picture with the mother and the daughter, and sometimes you're proud that your daughter is sexy or pretty and all. And so we're now giving access to hashtags that would open our children. For example, uh, you know, right. proud of my son challenge, proud of my daughter challenge. So we're giving online predators easy access to our children mm-hmm. because. You know, you practically joined the hashtag. Oh my hashtag gosh, yeah. And That's posted true. the picture of your son or picture of your daughter. So those things. And also, you know, um, we tend to click a lot yung mga what would your future daughter be like or what your future house would be like. You know, the, wa- right. the wow, the W-O-W and the O-M-G. Mm. Yeah, we, Filipinos are very, very fond mm-hmm. of those things. So if you see somebody post it online, oh, I'm going to try that as well. So if you click it, now you're, being, you're joining the trend. So how do they get your data by this? Usually, it's an appeal to emotion. So gustong gusto mo na lumabas na yung result of what your house, your grandiose yeah. house would look like, right? But in the middle of it, before they they show the result, there's something that you have to click. It says that it gives access to your contacts or access to your phone. Your I mean, photos. Yes, you just simply click yes because you really, really want to see what your future yeah. house would look like. So you don't have no regard of what that pop-up came up, what, what, what it really says, and just say yes. So yeah. because of that, they are able to gain access to your devices because you gave them permission to do it. And we don't uh, even read the terms and agreements. Yes. We're not fond yes. of that. Oh, so... Those are the things that you are actually most of us are guilty of because the yeah. agreements are in very, very small letters and you have to scroll down so many pages and then you just click agree. So we are all victims of those when we click agree when we installed Facebook in the first oh. place. I would just like to follow up, Ma'am Frenza. Like for, for instance, I've talked to a, a number of, you know, layman or commoner na parang who are also very active in their social media. Most of them would say na parang, you know, when when it comes to their privacy or their data, ano namang mawawala sa amin? Diba? Parang there's that mentality, especially among middle or lower economically speaking, hindi naman sila parang they don't appreciate yung, yung privacy. What can you say about this? That is the number one no-no. And yun yung pinaka loophole natin. Because when you think that they have nothing to, to gain from you. That right. is actually the kind of person that they are targeting. So I'm a person that, ah, I'm just a lowly employee. I'm just a clerk or something. No, yeah. I don't have anything that they would want. So those are the people who pose security threats. Why? Because yeah. when they leave their workstations, they do not turn off their devices. Yeah. So now it's open. It's wide open. Anybody can just sit on their computer, in computer desktops and then get the data that they want. And mm-hmm. also, these are the people who sometimes yeah. put their their passwords on a post-it under a keyboard or just or their their password or birthdays yes Yes. so Mm -hmm. because of those even if the security of the company is very very strict because there is a person who tends to be a loophole then i would target that person and be able to enter the network of the company those are the people that are actually being targeted because For the higher level positions, that's the one that the company is securing their accounts for. Diba? Sila yung binibigyan ng more emphasis. So right. bakit ako dun sa 45 pupunta? Dito na ako yeah. sa hindi protektado. I think one of the most serial criminal, cyber criminals are the ones that are very creative. Some criminals could actually find assets or values into s- simple things na tingin mo wala siyang value. Going back, when we talk about employees, um, probably as you already mentioned, we all know, you know, that the recent pandemic has forced many businesses and even employees to work remotely. And when it was declared, it was so abrupt and it was so, you know, urgent wherein employees just basically went home. Then the following day, they started working without the necessary training or capabilities put in place, (laughs) which makes them, you know, relatively vulnerable. So my question now is, what do you think are the most common or popular attacks faced by employees now or even last who are working remotely. First of all, we have to consider that biglaan na itong pandemic, di ba? Yeah. So people were like practically sent home because there was a lockdown. Right. And so because of that, even if the network of the company is is secure, dati kasi yung devices mo should be registered to the company to be able to join the network, right? right. But you sent everyone home. So you can't issue like laptops for individual 
people. So now the BYOD issue comes into place. You bring your own device. Own device. So yung sarili mong laptop, you use it, your, your iPads, your phones. And those are not secure. So it works both ways. The company is now very vulnerable to attacks because I use my laptop, for example, on a coffee shop and it's an open system. Yeah, so I could, be, yeah. I could have like a malware already there and then enter the network of the company. So the question is, what are the common type attacks for the people who are at home? One is um, phishing. It's so nice. phishing is like you tend to trick one into handling over your details or downloading say malicious attachment containing say a key logger yun nga sabi ko right. na ito na coffee shop so phishing can come in different ways so i just want right. to get your data so it's one of the most common attacks in phishing you have two distinct types in phishing so you have phishing and the spear phishing Fish. so think of it as say think of it as say you're really phishing phishing like mm. when you fish then you know you try to catch as many fish as you can phishing emails usually are sent to just practically any email address and so at random anyone can access it with the hope have that. that somebody <laughs> Somebody would open it and then the malware would now install itself on the device. But for spear phishing attack, you use a spear right, to fish. So actually, you're targeting a, partic- targeting a particular fish and that's, that's what you're trying to catch. So for spear phishing attacks, it's actually targeted to identify the individual. So for example, if you Eric, alam ko mayaman ka milyonaryo ka, I would target you in a spear phishing attack, <laughs> diba? Parang ganon. That posted an issue in one website in the US because there's a website there. It's like a dating website, but it's a website for married. So parang if you're bored with your marriage, and ano, they offer somebody to chat Sounds with, us. to talk to. Mm. But some kasi they lead to meeting each other. Mm-hmm. The hackers now targeted that website. Mm-hmm. So when they targeted that website, they were able to get the details of all of the people who has an account there. Mm-hmm. Yes, credit account details. And two, they have the names of the people. So what yeah. do they do? They would target for spear phishing attacks. They would call mm-hmm. them and they would blackmail them. I know yeah, that you're sure. accessing this this kind of website, uh-huh. you know. So I'm going to tell your wife. So naging problema siya sa mga taga-Arab countries. Mm-hmm. Because for Arab countries, you know, if you do that, they would probably cut your head off. Yeah, it's diba? illegal. So now, yeah. they can blackmail them to sending large chunks money. of money. Right. Yes. Yun yung, yun yung mga ano na yun. So, ang common this time, this time for Filipinos, for phishing attacks, di ba, nakakuha ka ng email. And so that email, ano yung common-common na yun? They'll try to get your bank details. So they will post something that looks like BDO or Land yeah. Bank or something. BPI. You know, yeah. oh, Metro Bank. It is now leading to a water hole attack. What is a water hole attack? Di ba, a water hole is a place where the animals would drink at night, di ba? Parang right. lahat sila pupunta doon, they would drink. So that is what the attacker would like you to do. The Go to the water hole and then you're comfortable there, di ba? Kasi na, na-refresh ka, nakakainom ka. So you click an, a phishing email in your account and they will lead you to a water hole of a site where you will key in your username password. Your name and password. Now they have it. Yeah. Diba? So now they have access to your account. So another type that is common is yung blackmail. Uh, we know uh, what blackmail is. So right. yun, yun, kanina yung kinu- mm-hmm. ko. Um, we also have spamming. Spamming is basically just sending a lot of data and then uh, yun nga, mag- magkaklog yung network dahil napakaraming mm-hmm. pumapasok na data. And so that. Just to and annoy then, you. Oh, and then we have also the online fraud, which is yung mga dating. Siguro yeah. we'll discuss that more. And then there's also this Trojan horse attack. Um, a Trojan horse attack, if you're familiar with the uh, Greek mythology by Troy, now. yeah. Yes, yes. So, diba, they, they, gave, uh, they, they gave a big horse. wooden horse as a gift and then inside were the troops, diba? In the modern world, a Trojan horse attack is actually like, like a virus. The attacks are usually an appeal to emotion. You know the love virus? The love virus is made by a Filipino. They send email and then when you open your email, there's a mail there that says love letter for you. Right. So, because... It's a love letter, you know. It's an appeal to emotions. <laughs> I would click it. Wow, somebody loves me. 
So when you open it, there's like dancing hearts. It's like an um, e-card. So while you're reading the message of the card with the, with the hearts dancing, the time it takes for you to read the whole content is actually the time it takes for the malware to install itself okay. in your computer. Mm -hmm. So that's it. And then now it's already in your computer. It will now send itself to all of your contacts. So, ganun siya, kaya siya nag mm -hmm. Opo, Ma'am Francel, how would you know if it is safe to open an email? First of all, don't open an email that you don't know who sent it. So, yun lang naman yung key doon. If you have administrators in your offices and stuff, and you are doubtful of a particular email, then don't open it. Especially if you see that it has attachments. So how would you know? Usually there is like a paperclip icon. Icon. In the, yes, in the in the title of the message, icon. and that means that it contains an attachment. So that's something doubtful already. And then, especially if the attachment is something um, executable, so that mm. exe, if you click it, it's automatically gonna download. Run. Yeah. Yeah. How about let's say for a particular scenario, we're in, we're operating a business, and then suddenly one of our sales employee received an email saying that uh, it's coming from a procurement department of a certain company with regard to delivery orders or order delivery. Although we're not familiar, probably my question is how would you determine aside from the fact na dapat Bidget. kilala mo kung saan siya nanggagaling? The thing is, kung yung empleyado yon, he or she should approach the manager or whoever is in charge of uh, ordering for the company and ask if they actually ordered something from this company that's sending an email. Because otherwise, there will be no delivery if there was no order in the first place. Actually, hand in hand in order. cyber and the physical world. So yes. sometimes you have to check then in the physical world, like talk to somebody, ask somebody, and then that's that's the time you have you you can be sure that it's a legit email. Another question here is mm -hmm. when we talk about cybersecurity, I think one of the, the vital terminology that would always come up is social engineering. So my question is, how is social engineering important in a potential cyber attack? But before you answer that question, Ma'am Francel, let me just cut this briefly for a short break and we will be right. Right Want to learn about corporate security and risk management from industry experts for free? Check our latest MidDirect Touchpoint to learn more. MidDirect Touchpoint is Black Pearl's online webinar platform where security professionals and enthusiasts discuss relevant security frameworks, strategies, and issues. To register, check our LinkedIn account for the most upcoming topic and schedule. Casting live from Manila, Philippines, we are Simply Security, helping you streamline security easily. Welcome back to Simply Security. Tonight we have Lieutenant Colonel Francel Margaret Padilla Taborlupa talking about cybersecurity in the Philippines. And before the break, Eric thrown this question. What is social engineering and how is social engineering important in a potential cyber attack? Social engineering is actually the use of deception to manipulate individuals into divulging confidential or personal information. That information that has been taken can be used for fraudulent purposes. So right. how do this happen? Important job because that is a source of an attack. So how do, do this uh, social engineering attacks happen? For example, Sir Eric, you have your phone with you? Yes. <laughs> yes. So, so I'm calling you, Sir Eric. Hello, Sir Eric. Hello. Can you answer the phone, please? <laughs> yes. So, so Eric, I'm from the IT division in your in, in your company, and I have seen that you haven't accessed your email for quite some time. Would you like me, sir, to reset your email? Uh, sure. I'm quite busy right now, so if kind enough, please do so. Okay, sir. Can I have your uh, username, please? Blah, 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 blah. <laughs> yeah, and uh, sir, I will reset your password, so I need your old password, please. And so blah, she's blah, blah, blah. busy right now, so tendency oh is... You just got to get you want to get it over with. So we would give it, it out. out. Sometimes I would do that, especially if you have a voice. That's so convincing. Some Filipino terms, this is like budol budol. Something happened, then ano, and then there's a sense of urgency, diba? Budol budol is actually a social engineering attack because they will get you to say important data and get you to do something for them. They're trying to socially connect to you in order to be able to attack you. So there are very simple things that allow people 
to be attacked socially. So, una, yung mga loopholes yan, yung mga pagod sa trabaho. And then they go home riding a jeepney and they don't re- remove their ID tags. So now, if you're in the jeep, patulog-tulog ka, ganyan. And then sa tapat mo, there's an attacker and they would just simply take a picture of your ID. Yeah. If I do that, Now, because the phone's cameras now are really very good, you know, very high mm-hmm. resolution, I could replicate your company. I changed the name, changed your picture to my picture, and now I could have access to your company. Yeah. I remember this particular case. I think we've also used this as a case study before in a previous episode we're in. There's a particular teacher who recently passed his boards and then received his PRC license. And out of extreme happiness, he decided to post it online on his Facebook. And mm-hmm. then parang several months after, he noticed he started receiving collection demand letters. So apparently without him knowing, somebody took his ID, PRC license, and then changed the photo and then basically use it for them to be able to file personal loans. So I think this is also one one thing that Tom Prenzel have want to read to you. Yes. Oh. For those who likes to post, you know, their ID tags online, even the boarding passes. Their boarding yeah. passes now are even posted. Mm. Diba? Even the passports, yung mga very happy that they receive their visa and post it online. Yeah. Ang sabi nga nila, even your child's report cards. Yeah. Because you're happy that your child yeah. received very high grades, you post it online. And then you don't know that yun palang student number niya is already there. Plus the full name and all L- that. LRN. Yes, yes. So mm. those things can be picked up by an attacker without actually being a hacker themselves. Diba? We also have the eavesdropping. It's type of a type of social engineering attack. Yung eavesdropping yeah. is very simple. Diba? Yung nakinig ka lang sa usapan. For those who are taking official calls, you step aside and take official call and then nakaka- may nakakarinig pala sa usapan. Mm-hmm. Minsan, may inuutusan tayo o sabihin natin, oh, yung account number ko and yung PIN ko, eh, order and ano, withdrawan mo ko, diba? and then you give it. Right. Yeah. Stuff like that. Even for those who are eating in restaurant fast food chains and then you're just talking to, with your colleagues and then sa kabilang table somebody hears the conversation they can grasp company wow. details with the information <laughs> yeah. so the key is huwag kayo mag-usap ng official sa mga very very uh, public places and then we also have another type which is called dumpster diving ano yung dumpster diving dumpster diving is saying may pera sa basura so if you receive a mail paper mail of your credit card bill for example you have no need for it kasi you paid online na so you throw it in the trash bin I can go to your office and simply go to your trash can and get papers that you threw away without shredding and get your details from me diba nandun na yung address mo I can also get your mid the name from that, diba? Those things na hindi mo naman basta-bastang makukuha. Sometimes it's there plus your uh, account numbers and all that. We should be worried if for official documents. Even nga yung online shopping mo, diba? Mm-hmm. Yung iba kasi hindi sila masyadong particular. Kung nga, that you will not be at home. Another type is called shoulder surfing. So, parang dito lang siya, diba? So, this is usually done in ATMs. When you're withdrawing, somebody looks over your shoulder. Right. Sort of uh, peeping tom kind of things. Another type of shoulder surfing is somebody who looks over your shoulder as you're typing your password in your laptop or somebody looking over your shoulder when you're trying to unlock your phone. Those are uh, types of attacks. Kasi, for example, the Miles and me are colleagues and we're in line in a buffet, for example, and I look at her when she tries to open the lock on her phone. Diba? Tatandaan ko na siya. Pag natandaan ko siya, sometimes there will be instances na you'll just put down your phone for a bit and then come back for it. So I can go there, open your phone, and then type a few digits in it and get your IMEI number. If I get your IMEI number, send it to a particular website like security.com. I think that's the, the, the one. I'm, I'm actually not sure. And send your IMEI number. The international in charge of those things will block your phone and it's it's gonna be useful, useless. So, kung hindi konti lang akong galit sa'yo, di ba? Parang gusto lang kita <laughs> I would do it. So, those are, ano, oh. very, very simple types of um, attacks for disgruntled employees. One more thing is the piggybacking and tailgating. So, this usually right. usually happens sa mga companies like, say, meron smoking area, di ba? Sa right. likod siya, tapos nandun. And then I try to to come near you. For example, Eric, ano, hi, Eric, uh, ano, I heard na sikat-sikat ka daw dito and try to create conversation. And, and when you try to enter the door with a lock, 
to the key padlock, I would go in in with you na. Sasabay. Right. Sasabay, di ba? So, yun yung mga tailgating, yung parang susunod na lang sila kasi wala silang access. We usually see this in the movies, but hindi kasi natin pinapansin. Mm-hmm. May question there, Ma'am Frances. Why does this happen? For instance, I don't think naman that most people are not really aware of this because in terms of information dissemination, we could actually see this uh, in news, in TV, in Twitter, so on and so forth. Why is it keep on happening, kumbaga? Is it because they're just people who are too trusting, too naive, or doesn't care? Yung term mo kasi, Eric, it's like victim blaming, di ba? Right, right. So all of us are very, very trusting. So we're just yeah. living our normal lives, di ba? Mm-hmm. But it's actually not blaming the victim, but looking at the attackers. We have yes. different yeah, yeah. attackers, di ba? Yeah. How do I do it? Yes. So each attacker has different motives. So mm-hmm. noon kasi, when you say a hacker, ano yung iniisip nyo? Usually juvenile, delinquent. But nowadays, hackers Isn't are very much king with us. Ordinary. Proliferating. They're ordinary people. They could be a 10-year-old who's really just very tech savvy. Right. Kasi ngayon, right. I can go to YouTube and probably look at how to hack. And study. And then, right. Yes, and right. study. Yeah, diba? So there are different motives. For me, kanina, you said that I was an ethical hacker, which is actually a misnomer mm-hmm. because there's not nothing ethical in hacking. It's yeah. a violation of privacy. <laughs> but it's because that I'm a white hat. So there is three hats. There is a black hat hacker, gray hat hacker, and the white hat hacker. A black hat is yung masamang loob. They will mm-hmm. hack for gain. Get credit card details, right. try to sabotage a country, and stuff like that. So those are the black hats, hat hackers. Yung white hat is an ethical hacker. So... I would try to hack, say, a bank. And then I would try all the ways in in order for me to penetrate the system of the bank. And if I see a loophole, I will tell the bank, dito ka mahina. So fortify this. This is how a hacker can come in. So that's ethical mm-hmm. hacking. We are commission to look at loopholes for them to fortify their systems. And a gray hat is somebody in between. Sa umaga, kaibigan mo ko, bangko, pinabayaran mo ko to, ha- to, to fortify your system. But in the evening, I do black hat hat. So that's that's a gray hat. Bantay sa lakay. I think that, yes. that's a term. Right. So those are different, there are different <laughs> cyber attack motives. Diba? Sabi ko kanina, one is an organized crime. So they can work as a group. Diba? Usually, mm-hmm. yan yung mga sasabi lang, mga itim, yung mga Kenyans. So, you know, I will call you and then you send me money because I have $10 million so I need to send in your country. Diba? Mga ganun. Yeah, right. So what are, what's their mm-hmm. motive? Money. Another motive is angry person. Kanina yung sinabi ko, yung mga discriminatory right. employees, mm-hmm. di ba? So yung ICs are targeting these people. The lonely uh, people, you know, the people who are single, they come, come home to an empty house, they have nobody, they just have a cat. And so the ICs will try to target these people. Kasi pinupost naman nila sa Facebook eh. Sometimes makikita mo sa Facebook kung sino yung mga masasama ang loob. Galit sa gobyerno, galit sa, right. ano mo yun, yung mga with their posting of mga quotes, everything, di ba? Sentiments. So you will, you will, you can just hate. Sorry, I can, you can judge a person by that. There could be customers also so that are dissatisfied, they're angry persons as well. Diba? Yung mga, pwede mong gamitin din yung galit ng tao to come back to a particular, ano. Meron tayong unsatisfied former employees and they want revenge. They want revenge, then I will get you to come to my side and let's do this and put down this website, put down this bank. And for ISIS, you know, you're lonely, you don't have somebody, nobody loves you. In the afterworld, you'll be met by 21 virgins. So what do you yeah. do? Go to the Eiffel Tower and then wear this bomb really dress. High. Again, there's another type that's called hacktivist. So what do, you, mm. do they do? They hack a particular website, mm. they face it, and what do they want? They want destruction. They want racism. Attention. Yes, disruption and political influence. Mm. So yun yung mga yun, hacktivism. So yun yung goal nila. Yung mga dating activista nga, they do it online. Which is right. now very pro- proliferating in the Philippines din. Kasi di ba, yung mga protesta ngayon, nasa social media na siya. May mga bata na nag-hack and they're called script kiddies. Ito wow. yung mga, they're just <laughs> This is the first time I've heard this. Oh, script, script kiddies. kiddies. Yes, okay. they're trying to test their skills. Uh, they do it for excitement and fun. They're training and experimenting. And another is like for teenagers, they want to show off. Right. So they just want to say na, ah, I can hack. 
you know, I deface your Facebook. I can do this. I'm a hacker. Yeah. I'm cool. Yes. But this, this is quite, no, no. I mean, this is quite um, interesting because since they're juvenile or, you know, they're, they're trying to prove a point, it makes them more alarming. The larger the, the, the destruction can be, the more attention that they would get, the more validation that they would get. Yes. Yes. Right. So they eventually end up being attention state hacker. An expert na. Right. Oh, oh. so uh-uh. what do they do now? They do, they want destruction. They want to spread this information for political influence, political gain. And sometimes also for espionage. Lumalaki ng lumalaki yung scope. And sometimes the nation state actually hires these people to right. do that for them. So for example, kung ako, di ba mahirap na bansa tayo, we cannot buy a lot of grandiose ships and jet fighter planes and all that. Then what do I do? I would just commission say 5-10 hackers as a team and try to put down and hack that nation na mayaman. Paano? Because now, the rich countries are beginning to, to be smart cities, di ba? So they are mm-hmm. getting to be smart, smart cities. And pag sinabi mong smart city, what comes to mind? Smart city to is to... being predictive. I go to a particular place, I look at my phone, I know what parking slot is empty. So that's where I go, di ba? I ride yeah. a train, I know that in N number of minutes, it's gonna arrive. In N number of minutes, it's gonna come, come, mm-hmm. back, come, come there. So what do we see with that? We get patterns. So malalaman right. ko, ah, sa itong taong to, ganitong mm-hmm. oras bababa to ng trend. Tatambangan ko siya ng ganitong oras. It's a routine. Yes. Mm-hmm. For smart cities also, it's centrally controlled. So for dark portions, you light it up. Diba? There's a central control for that. And there's a central control for the traffic lights and yeah. all that. So as a hacker, I just will need to get access to the central control panel and create chaos. So even banking systems, they're moving to a cashless society. Kasi yes. sabi nga nila, pag may cash ka, yun yung mm. ano, source ng crime, di ba? Kasi may hold up. It attracts. Yes. So, so kaya sila ngayon, card na lang siya, di ba? Card, so tap, tap ng card. So if I'm a hacker and I'm able to tap into that network, then the, the city bugs down. Alam mo, pag walang, walang transactions, that's gonna happen. They cannot even gas up their cars if you are able It's to... It's a domino, domino effect, kumbaga. Yeah. So, kaya nga sabi ko, if you're not really that rich to buy um, armaments and ano, then commission a group of very, very good hackers, you can topple down a country. Again, coming back, um, there's another Uh-oh. one more one more reason yeah, that uh, I said na for them why they have competition. KFC. KFC has that recipe. Yeah. They're looking good recipe. Secret Which recipe. Other, oh, secret recipe. Yun yung gusto kong makuha. So, I would mm. hack for that because competition. So that is why Macintosh, you know, Apple and Samsung would try to hack each other because they want to see the capabilities of the new phone that's going to come Or the out. next feature, right. Oh, right. yeah. So yeah, those are the motives of hackers. So you know, which leads back to your question that we don't blame the big because we're all just living our lives normally. Right. It's the hackers who have different... Now, I have a question, Ma'am Francel. If you are an institution or you are a business and you are forced to uh, shift to um, digital operations, digital, right. what, are, what are the first, let's say, three things that you should remember to be protected Protected, kahit hindi pa ganun ka laki yung understanding mo or grasp of what the digital space is. The thing is, for business owners, if I'm gonna be online, people would, um, you know, proponents would offer me systems to use for my business. Install mm-hmm. this and then you now have cashless transaction. People can pay you online. Uh, mm-hmm. Install this and people can order from online. Diba? Mga ganun. It make your business very effective and efficient. Number one, Mm -hmm. that you should be aware of, you should always be available. I mean, your network should be available. Kasi pag hindi ka online, nobody's gonna be able to order to you. Or if somebody orders and they don't get their order because your network is not good, then you're your business, magagalit sila sa business mo. They'll give you bad reviews and then hindi na sila uulit. So number one, check your network. Dapat maganda yung connectivity mo. Number two, check the systems that are going to be sold to you. So I'm going to buy this system because information system, ha, I mean, because I'm going to install this for, for the use of my business. But you have to take into consideration that the, those developers that made that system were checking for functionality. Alam mo yun, pag clinic ko to, dapat, Babato siya as an order. 
pag clinic ko to, click, 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 di ba? Na-add niya na ito yung final order. Now, what is the missing element to that? Everything is functional. Yes, it's working good, but there is no security aspect. Wala eh. Sino nagsasabi na, na secure siya? Usually, it's just user, username, password, and then that's it. Kasi for you to fortify your systems, like a company, a big company, large companies, they have firewalls, they have intrusion detection systems, and all that, IDS. But maliit ka lang kasi na kumpanya eh. So hindi mo naiisip yun. Mm. Now, you are a potential victim for the hackers kasi wala kang security in place. So yun yung dapat natin natin. We have to have a good system and we have to secure the data of our customers. Kasi pag lumabas yun, name mo, address, nung sino yung mga nag-order sa'yo and na- nakita nila na mm-hmm. dahil yun sa yung mismong restaurant na yun ng reason kung bakit na nag-leak yung info, then pwede ka right. din. Nakuha. Nakuha to it. Mm-hmm. Diba? Yeah. So yun. How about naman, Miss uh, Ma'am Frenza, like, let's um, turn the table around. That Let's say I am a consumer, especially during the pandemic. You know, there's a, a real, parang a, a big proliferation of online sellers, informal and formal, lalo na informal. Because yes. like, for, for, for instance, on my case, I tend to buy things that are not usually common, let's say, in a popular commercial establishment. The first thing that pops in my mind is, let's say, a, a specific Philip pliers, let's say. And then if I cannot find it in a popular hardware my tendency is to go to a marketplace. Like, you know, you you have a lot of online marketplaces yeah. now. And most of them are not registered or they're not, you know, but you still want to buy it. So how would I protect myself from informal or unregistered online sellers? Um, what I do for those instances is to search for the name of the seller. Kasi pag ginugal mo yan, it will come up. Even in Facebook, right. you can search for the name. And most often than not, if they've been scamming before, their names will pop up because somebody will be confused. Mm-hmm. Kahit sa post lang. Di ba? Parang mm-hmm. sa post lang. Parang itong taong to, wag kayong bibili dito. Manloloko yan. Sometimes they go by these names, by these names. Ganun. So they will come up. Look at the reviews right. and search for the name of that person and then look at the how old their accounts are. Right. Minsan kasi, ano eh, Yon, yung, yeah. diba, pag yung account mo sa Facebook, for example, was created in 2010, oh, I would say, oh, this is already an 11-year-old account. So it's probably mm-hmm. legit, ba? Diba? Pero pag it's, yeah. the account came up three months ago, three, uh, three days ago, then probably they just take down one account and then create another one to scam people. So look at reviews, look at the background of the, no, and then look at the site itself. Sometimes, um, for personal sellers, there are also personal hints to the ano, to the site. Pero pag talaga nothing there to show identity or anything at all, then may mm-hmm. mag doubt na kayo. Look for another seller. I also so, remember but, while you're while you're saying it, because parang now I've noticed that there are also a lot of delivery companies who offer CODs. What they do is they carry muna, parang they, they advance the payment so that they would pay it from the, the online sellers. And then from that point on, it's a charge na lang nila once it's delivered to the consumer. In in a yes. way, in, in the perspective of uh, a buyer, it kind of guarantees na there's an item that will be given to me. I think I, I just wanted to given. share it because yeah. that, that's something that I've, all, uh, that I've just noticed recently. Yeah, COD is good if you're the buyer. Mm-hmm. But sometimes COD is um, detrimental naman sa middle persons. Right. So like, right. there were instances like yung Grab, uh, si Grab na Manong na nag-order ng 15 na milk tea. Milk tea. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and then wala pa lang recipient, di ba? Mga ganon. So, um, siguro, to each his own, whatever right. role you play, then be wary of how you can protect yourself. So, si Manong, iba din yung how he would protect himself. Si buyer, iba din. Good point. Right. Now, Ma'am Francel, as a mother of two, how do you teach uh, cybersecurity to your to your sons, to your children? My children also, always comes with me wherever I go. <laughs> <laughs> so, mostly, they're with me then um, during most of my lectures. My children are already very uh, mature. So, I have mm-hmm. a 20-year-old and an 18-year-old. Mm-hmm. So, it's not very difficult to teach them now. <laughs> <laughs> right. They actually understand it. <laughs> 
they are also very uh, helpful for me whenever I do all of these lectures because they're very, very uh, ano, supportive of me. So they set up an actual setup every time I have a lecture. So Because I'm, I'm really concerned right now. Example, I have uh, two siblings. Uh, they're in grade 8 and 9. And um, it, is, it was my rule then na bawal sila mag-Facebook until they reach 16 or 18 but because of you know online classes even before that they were forced or, or not really forced but they feel it is necessary to have a facebook account so that they can join group chats for mm. school purposes however it really concerns me and i guess most of uh, the parents in the in the audience um so how how would we uh, introduce um, the, the cybersecurity consciousness if we adults are also vulnerable to be victims in the future? The key is awareness. So you, you don't have to teach them like you're teaching in a class, classroom session. No? Mm -mm. You have to inculcate to them the importance mm -mm. of being secure and yeah. being open to you as parents. Diba? Parang, mm. kasi the thing is, one is um, TikTok. TikTok is something mm. that was developed by China but not being used by China. So, yun pa lang eh, mayroon ka ng ano doon kung ano yung TikTok, TikTok. And what do people do in TikTok? They they dance, you know, yung iba nagpapasexy Pala. and all that. So, kailangan mag matignan natin kung what our children are actually doing online. TikTok can be used for for sexual predators to hunt for for, for victims. So also, if you watch TikTok, may mga videos din doon that are encouraging people to commit suicide. So you really have to That's watch true. what your children are yeah. doing. And now, they are now also proliferating in online games. You know mm. yung Rob Roblox? Right, Roblox right, is right. a game for kids. Mm -hmm. and there was a story that this mom was looking at the daughter, a small uh, baby girl, mga 6 or 7 years old, playing Roblox. And she saw that the character of the child was being raped. Nandun na siya ganun. So it, 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 now the sexual predators are also online. So you really have to watch what your children are doing. So I think the key is openness. You have to talk to them. You have to know what they're doing They're doing online. And you dapat know, friends kayo sa Facebook. So you also monitor <laughs> what, they're, what they're posting and who their friends are. What they're doing. So, oh. So yun, yun, you have to inculcate all of these things. Kasi there were actual cases of suicide because of cyberbullying. Your kid could be a victim of cyberbullying. You know, there's like just a picture na nakakahiya. Diba? Ngayon kasi like, ano, lumipad lang yung falda kasi mahangin, pinituran, nakuhanan yung undies, ipopost online. And a uh, one 13 year old girl in the U.S. committed suicide because she was cyberbullied. Ano mo yon? Because now affirmations nowadays are very very uh, connected online. Ano mo yon? Pag nagpost ka gusto mo ng more likes, de ba? Uh, comments and all. So parang yung buhay natin umiikot siya ng ganon. We tend to see reality na, de ba? Parang more on lahat. Ah, to picture ko muna yung kakainin ko kasi para ipopost ko siya. Diba? Lahat na siya ganun eh. We sing a birthday song and then we, we, we touch we it with it. our phones. Diba? We watch your fireworks display and we don't watch it with our own eyes. Our phones are up there and taking a, a, yung reality that you would have appreciated with your own eyes. Meron na siyang in between which is Barriers. our reality. Right. So right. what I do with my kids is when we are at the dining table, kasi syempre I work, so I only have dinner time to be with them and talk to them and ask them about our day. And so I say, in the dinner table, gadgets are not allowed. During dinner, that's when oh, we talk okay. to each other. How was your day? Uh, you know, that's when you get to know. Tell me about your day. What happened to you? And we have that, um, we used to have that high-low. What is your high for the day and what is your low for, your the, low day? for the day? Ah. Yeah, so you see, you, you get, they tell you na, oh, malungkot ko today kasi ganito, I, I got this. So you get there. So meron kang hurul na ganun, high-low. What's your high? What's your low? I got, uh, no, I, I got high score in math. I'm happy. So that's my high. For my low, ganun, sasabihin mo. You set a time for no gadgets and open time for you to to communicate. All right. Now, Ma'am Francel, you are also a researcher and I would like to 
ask this question as a researcher, okay? Uh, I mean, do you think we are behind when it comes to cybersecurity awareness, Filipinos in general? Or do you think uh, as a population, there are already some sort of um, improvement as to the maturity uh, of Filipinos when it comes to cybersecurity? Um, we used to be, um, but now... Because you see the DICT, the Department of Information and Communications and Technology, mm. is a fairly new agency. Yeah. So I think um, with that creation of that agency, you know, the Philippines now step. has a realization to give more emphasis into the cyber world, yeah. right? so the cyber arena. So I think with the creation of the ICT, the government of the Philippines has recognized the value. And institutionalized it. Yes. So I think it goes well. It cascades down to the Filipinos. Now, oh, my DICT na, we are now having all of these Wi-Fi spots, you know, in Manila, and ano, di ba, yung mga bus stops natin and all, they're now being connected and all that. So, I think um, what needs to be done na lang is to, to spread the word. So, these things, yung mga ganitong conversations, mm-hmm. as long as people listen, get more people to, to, to get their attention and tell them the importance of this, then, ano yan? Uh, word by mouth na yan. Kaya mas gusto yeah. ko yung conversation kasi uh, you know, somebody out there would be telling this na rin. Di ba? Parang yeah. word by mouth. Di ba? So I can share it. That's yeah. true. Kanina po when we're talking about smart cities, there is some hint of the disadvantaged position when a city is too much connected. I think few years back, five years ago, uh, our our internet connectivity is not like this. Compared five years ago, this is already fast. With the uh, new players in the internet communications coming in in the Philippines, as a, an IT professional and cybersecurity professional, Mang Francel, do you think there is something that we should watch out for as the too much connectivity that will happen when the third or uh, a new player will come in? Nag-start actually yung career ko ng pag-lecture ng cybersecurity due to the cyber, uh, Smart City Summit. So I was invited uh, by ano by a uh, then mayor um, in Quezon City, si... Belmonte? And ano, uh, before her, Herbert Bautista. Uh, yes. Bautista. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Herbert invited, Bautista, yeah. Yes, they, they were planning to conduct, uh, you know, uh, convert into a smart city. So in the smart city summit, everyone was all good, diba? They were talking na, oh, this is the advantage of a smart city. You will predict this, predict that, you know, and, and all that. Yung sabi ko kanina na, yung, you can open lights when it's dark. You can you, know, you can control the traffic signals. Mm-hmm. You can control, uh, you would know where, where a parking slot is open and all that. But when my lecture came in, you know, people where like, para silang nabuhusan ng malamit. Step back. <laughs> <laughs> Step I was back. the devil's advocate. <laughs> Right. Yeah, step back muna. In the room, I was the only one who told them that yeah, yeah, these people who's trying to create all of these smart cities tend to neglect the security aspect. Of aspect, it. sure. It goes both ways, kasi eh. once you open something and put it online, then the vulnerability is also there. Exposed. And especially for smart cities, it's smart, de ba? So even for smart houses, you just say open the lights. Close the lights, di ba? So it's very, very easy. And it's also very easy for attackers to use it against a person. And because it's smart, it's basically wala siyang ano to, Wi-Fi. It, 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 wala, siyang, wala siyang lines. There's no yeah. lines to it. It's Cable. mostly nasa, yes, nasa, wala siyang ganon. It's mobile and it's wireless. Right. So because if it's wireless, it's in the air. So anybody yeah. can be an attacker just it. anywhere. You know, yeah. you can you can disrupt the signal and, and hack a person. So with the coming in of a third party, uh, Telco, it opens the playing field naman for different choices. So it's actually a pro and the cons is still the same because right. the attack vectors are still the same, mm-hmm. be it they're a third Telco or not. It's, 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 it's still the it's same. It's constant. Mm-hmm. Yes, yes. Yeah. Thank you very much, Lieutenant. Colonel Tabarlupa. Kulang ang oras. <laughs> uh, oh, ang dami na yung gusto ng tanongin. But we just have to take a short break again. And then once we go back, we will... Then continue the discussion by reading some of our participants' insights and questions here in Simply Security. Tonight's episode is brought to you by Business Profiles Incorporated, leading the way to strategic corporate risk and security management solutions. Business Profiles Incorporated, our business is to keep you in business. 
Black Pearl Consultancy, bringing intelligence analysis, travel security, and business continuity support to new heights. Black Pearl Consultancy, intelligence for smarter decisions. DP Argus Security Services Incorporated. For holistic industrial protection, BP Argus Security Services is committed to the highest standards of providing effective security manpower services. Blue Four Security Services, the security manpower of choice by many companies and organizations in the Philippines. Blue Four Security Services, delivering quality protection and service integrity to your corporate needs. Chronicle Data and Research Solutions. Chronicle Data and Research Solutions provides comprehensive corporate inquiries and background checks for businesses and organizations. Chronicle Data and Research Solutions, delivering concise, factual, and relevant service through expertise and trust. Silver Point Training and Development, the knowledge and skill building arm of Business Profiles Inc., offering the latest, most practical and strategic briefings and corporate trainings in the field of business security. Casting live from Manila, Philippines, we are Simply Security, helping you streamline security easily. All right, we're back and the floor is open for your questions. We have a comment coming from Sir Hermi Colina. His comment is, white hats have the authority to hack to check the vulnerability of systems. Gray hats are both black and white hats. Identity theft is a serious problem that victimizes a lot of people. I think this supports what uh, Ma'am Francel was uh, talking about earlier. Let me just go through earlier, uh, yeah. the, the question coming from Mr. Giovanni Shalbo. My concern is simple. As of now, there are more people who are fond of making videos informing the, the government uh, government projects in various parts of the country. I'm just worried if whether or not there's a tendency that this particular project will become a target of hack. No, sir, that is actually a problem of ano, balancing security and how we really live our daily lives. Yeah. Kasi, we have to balance the security aspect to it. If we secure so much, then people will not use it. And also for the comms, for strategic comms, the government needs to know to tell the people that something is happening, that development is happening. Otherwise, you know, people will get swayed by activists. Wala nang ginagawa yung gobyerno, di ba? Yung pondo na uubos and we don't feel a thing. So I think that we should be able to strike a balance between these things. So now we have this government project and maybe we can commission the police or the AFP to safeguard the project itself. And uh, syempre, pagkakilala din siya and alam din naman ng lahat that that project is there and the government made this and look at the, how beautiful it is and then somebody tries to destroy it and they're also destroying their reputation. So there's also a silver lining to it. Question from Sir Hermie. Um, Ma'am Francel, what's your take on the current contact tracing process? The current contact tracing process is actually in silos. I think we should devise a mother system that will yes. connect all of the contact tracing applications that are out there. The thing is, we have a proliferation of so many, many QR codes. Wherever you go, there's a QR code. Wilkin Builders has, you know, McDonald's has and everything. Yeah. I think um, the government should it's just my opinion. One QR, one person. And then balik right. na natin. Like the companies, they have the capability to buy hardware. So let the McDonald's scan the QR code of the person who's coming in and not yeah. the person who's trying to come in, scan the QR code of that facility. As a point of suggestion, maybe we can piggyback it into the government's nationwide nation ID. Maybe we can put the QR yeah. code yeah. there. And so we have one singular ID for the Filipino and then one QR code for everyone as well. So it's just my opinion and a matter of suggestion, but because there's actually a lot of contact tracing applications. And we even have, love books. <laughs> yes, yes. And we haven't seen anyone being traced using yeah. this contact tracing application. So I think we should do something about it. And that is why Mayor Magalong was chosen to be the contact tracing czar because his contact tracing application was very, very effective. Because, you know, Mayor Magalong was from the police. 
and he used to have a system to track um, agents, you know, criminal organizations and all, you know, yung parang this, this gang would connect to this and this. And so he repurposed that system to become a contact tracing application. So this person went to this place and then this is the people that he, he contacted. So, ganun. so that is why it was very effective from the onset of the pandemic. And so he was commissioned to be the contact tracing czar to teach the rest of the archipelago on how to do That's a story behind that pala. All right. Well, we also have from Mr. Ramon Fernando, smart cities or industrial IoT is the newest threat vector and there is not enough security, especially at the edge, devices or sensors. This is too technical, sorry. Does the government have the initiative to protect IoT networks? Yes, because uh, now that we have the, the ICT, we have now different goals to be achieved. So one goal is the security aspect. So I think with the help of uh, cybersecurity ex- experts, they would try to see the attack vectors that could, ha- could happen and would, they would try to preempt it by installing different um, hardware and software behind it. Now, there's a comment from Genghis Valdez. So proud of you, Ms. Ta. Ms. Ta mo po ito. <laughs> <laughs> Class integrity yan, ha, Bok? <laughs> <laughs> Right. Hello, uh, hello, po. And uh, from Sir Ramon Fernando, is the National Data Privacy Act being implemented in terms of penalties? Uh, the latest data breach, according to him, is uh, the Civil Service Commission, and it was also reported. Yes, there are reports, but for the law to take effect, there should be a complainant. There should be a case yeah. that's to, supposed to be filed. So maybe we'll look into what agency would do that, and we'll move from there. The thing is, we support whatever investigation that will happen. Okay. Thank you very much for all of your questions and comments. Unfortunately, we have to move forward to the last segment of our show, which we call Quick Talk. Mom Frenzel, this will be just very simple. Uh, we'll, bas- we'll just basically ask you a quick question uh, wherein you're just going to choose from two options. You just have to give us a short answer. No need for any explanation. All right. Desk work or field work? Field work, definitely. Dealing with government employees or dealing with government officials? Government employees. Quickly, what is the most <laughs> stressful and most rewarding part of your job? Networks that I gain. Wow. Yeah, most memorable situation you have been? Being part of the pandemic response. Mm-hmm. Being uh, a speaker so or being a conference attendee? Speaker. <laughs> Cars. Actually, come to think you're of the, it, the first. Uh, the you're the first one who answered. They wanted to be a speaker. I'm so I'm so dull, dull like that. <laughs> 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 but we love. But I will. I like you for that. You're so eloquent, mm. and um, you're actually bringing the cybersecurity conversation clo- closer yeah. to uh to the people. Gen- I mean, if Gen- you're not uh, that's that's true. Now here is the last question or last uh, part um, of this quick talk segment. Three advice you want to give for individuals, especially for women who want to pursue the path in cybersecurity. I would say for cyber women, not to be afraid to go out there and be on the tech level because people uh, tend to be afraid of tech for I don't know whatever reason, but tech is actually, yes. So um, I encourage more cyber women to be out there, you know, take the to take the leap of faith and break the glass ceiling. Yes, break the glass ceiling, and I, I I'm sure you'll enjoy you'll enjoy the ride. Wow! Thank you so much, Lieutenant Colonel Francel Margaret Padilla Taborlupa. This was such a wonderful discussion, and we hope you had fun as much as we had tonight. All right, thank so we we'll Thank you very much, Mom Francel. So, and also, we'd like to thank everyone who tuned in and participated in Business Profiles and Black Pearls Security Podcast, Simply Security. We hope that you enjoyed and learned something tonight uh, through this episode. And we also wish to have you again next time. Uh, we're casting live every Wednesday, 6.30 p.m. To get the latest information, especially on security in the Philippines and for upcoming events, do not forget to follow us on Facebook and LinkedIn at Black Pearl Consultancy under Information Services and on Twitter at Black Pearl underscore INC. Please also subscribe to our YouTube channel at Black Pearl Consultancy and give a like to our videos. We'd like to give special thanks to our production team and our managing director, Mr. Joseph Gueta who's also part of uh, our audience. Thank you so much for making this program possible. Again, I am Miles Melia. And this is Erica Lindogan. This has been Simply Security. Helping you streamline security. 
easily. Thank you very much, my friend, Sal. Have a very good night. Thank you. <laughs>